Mr. Payer, on behalf of the European, it's a great pleasure to present you with this award. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you, Angelos. Many thanks to the editors of the European and above all, all the subscribers who have taken the time to fill in uh, the forms and we thank them that we could stand out uh, and, and be recognized on behalf of all the staff of Company Monegasque Bank. Big, big thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Compagnie Monegasque de Banque has been awarded Customer Service Private Bank for the Year for leading the market in international private banking in Monaco. And I'm very pleased to, see that, to say that their CEO, Mr. Werner Payer, joins me now to talk about your continued success. How did you get this award? Well, first of all, it was a huge surprise, not something that we could ever have planned for. Um, we, we are dedicated to client service uh, every day, and, and we first of all, are delighted with client feedbacks uh, when they are delighted and, and, and uh, recommend this uh, to other clients. But to be recognized by somebody outside from an international point of view um, was a, a huge joy um, for all of us. And we are very grateful to all the subscribers of the European magazine to have taken the time to fill in and, and think about uh, us and the fact that we could stand out and differentiate. In a very fast-changing, fast-paced world, what do you think the secret is to delivering that brilliant, quite intuitive customer service that I think people now have come to expect? Well, in our business, I think you need two sets of core competencies. One is technical and the other is emotional. And sometimes people are surprised when we talk about emotional skill sets, but this is all about private banking being highly competent technically and understanding client, clients and listening to clients. Our core value is based around this core value of client service. I'm sure you've heard client service uh, many times, but we define it first of all as relationship bankers and not product sales people. Relationship bankers means, above all, you listen. And we train our people to listen. We don't sell, at best we invite to buy uh, as a consequence, but we listen to understand the needs, the needs of our clients. And in Monaco, this is a, an extraordinary, uh, of course, microcosmos, where you have 120 different nationalities in Monaco. And our clients are as diverse as Monaco residents could possibly be. So listening first to clients means you understand them. And since everybody is different, every client is different, he has different needs, she has uh, different ambitions. If you listen, you can understand and you can then propose specifically to that person. You're somebody who's worked in banking for a long time. What sort of lessons have you picked up along the way about how to and how not to deal with the customer to make them feel valued, isn't it? Because that's really the holy grail, isn't it? People want to feel valued like they matter. I started in private banking a very long time ago, it feels, uh, and I'm still very passionate about it. I had many offers from my bosses to go in other uh, areas of the banking industry, and I've always resisted to say, I want to prove and I want to deliver in private banking. And I've worked with several large international banks. And I'm grateful that I could always pick best practices. And ultimately now as a CEO of a relatively small bank, although in Monaco it's uh, one of the largest, but in international st by international standards it's, uh, it's relatively small, boutique, I can draw from all these different experiences but again it is about being client focused and as diverse as the Monaco clients are as diverse I try to have our staff being of different languages of different cultures of different um, risk attitudes so we can pair the clients with the best banker for their specific needs. And so it's all about matching the perfect couple, banker, client. 
and then support the banker. Sometimes I, I shock my people by inversing the, the organization chart. And I put the CEO at the bottom and the general management uh, together with me at the bottom, helping the bankers to develop and giving them service so that they can give the best possible service to clients. Because ultimately, at the highest level, it's the clients. And we are there to support. A very well-known bank here in, in London, founded in 1692, still signed their letters in 1999 as your most obedient servant. <laughs> and I found that very strange and, and totally outdated. But listening to them, it was really like delivering service. Humble, yes, why not? Not being arrogant and, and, and trying to know more than the clients would do, be, be a partner. Uh, and, and so, although I was totally shocked as a Swiss to, to hear this um, wording and, and, and this expression, I thought about it and, and, and I think, with hindsight, I apologize that I <laughs> laughed at the time. Uh, I think it's a good expression. We're there to serve. Interestingly, with the changing world that it is and the, and the changing risk landscape that exists, how do you help your clients to make the right investment decisions for them specifically? We try to teach them once we understand what they need. And, and, and I, I go a step back and, and I, I started explaining our core values, client service, Another core value of the bank is competence and innovation. And, and there is a, a slogan for a Swiss watchmaker that says, to break the rules, you must first master them. And this is all about learning and, and gaining in competence. And once you're highly competent, you can step out of the box knowingly what you leave behind and what, how you could develop that set of rules into a new world. And so we invest a lot in, in training our own people. Every year, at least 50% of our people, and we have 200 people in Monaco, at least 50% have undergone some form of training in continuous learning. And we've adapted that learning and that training to offer that to our clients. To give you an example, we launched the Academy Women in Finance. Why did we do that? Well, first of all, the World Bank has published a survey not so long ago, and it was a survey done in 120 countries about financial literacy. And the conclusion was, it's a men-dominated world. Financial competence is with men. Yet, second uh, statistics, women live longer, in traditional marriages, women are younger than men. And so combining the two means at a certain point in time, women have to assume responsibility for managing the family wealth. Yet if they don't have the full competence, many bad things can happen. And the wealth accumulated can be lost in a short time. So with this in mind, we launched an academy offering women in Monaco to come to school. With our own people, we teach. We teach different subjects over a year. The ladies come to classes once a month. They do homework, they debate, they get very interested, they listen to the news uh, differently and they read in the newspapers differently. And they talk to their husbands about family wealth. And, and, and so, this is what, what we, we try to do, giving them competencies. It's not our privilege to have the competence in understanding finance. We want to share it, because then we are equal partners and we can develop together a plan. The better we share the vocabulary, the better we show the, the, uh, share the knowledge, the better we can develop a plan together, where we see finance and family wealth develop. So it sounds to me like 
as important the structural things, investments, you know, um, money making, interest rates, these things are all important. But it also sounds to me like you guys are very focused on family, that the kind of personal side of the relationship that really makes the whole thing sing. We've been in, in existence now for 40 years. That may not sound terribly long for, for many great institutions, but for Monaco it's an important um, period. 40 years also means that we are now into the third generation already uh, of clients, um, or second generation. But above all, we have accompanied families with um, their, their different generations for 40 years now. And, and so we want to continue helping the families to grow, preserving and grow their wealth. And in the, in the economy, women and finance, for instance, we have mothers and daughters uh, joining as well, uh, so that the daughters can learn together with the mother, uh, and, and it gives the comfort to those families to know that their family wealth will be well looked after together with the bank. What do you hope for in terms of the future of the bank? I mean, we're going into a period, certainly, in Europe that we have never seen before. Um, but in terms of the future for the bank, regardless of the outside context, what would you like it to look like? <clears throat> there is an enormous wave of consolidation going on. Um, many banks withdraw, withdraw from certain finance or financial centres. They completely withdraw from certain services, such as private banking. Private banking, the way I have watched and observed it, was the honeypot of the banking industry in the 90s. Not much capital. It seemed to be very easy to, to advise private clients because they may not have been as challenging as institutional clients. So everybody rushed into private banking. Yet, it is far more complicated. Clients are far more demanding and they need uh, and they deserve to be demanding. And... If you don't do it properly, you're out of business uh, very quickly. We see our bank as a consolidator. As we speak now, we are completing an acquisition. We've done already two in the past. This is our third major acquisition in Monaco, and we will do more. There are still 33 banks operating in Monaco. I think there will be fewer uh, in the future. And because of our extraordinary financial stability and solidity, we have, by European standards, the highest capital ratio, which means we have enough money to invest in an acquisition and the other party selling to us knows that we can afford to pay. We don't need to do capital increases, we can pay, so there's a deal certainty in any future transaction. So we see ourselves as a consolidator and an actor rather than a victim in, in these fast evolving times. Do you think in terms of customer service that perhaps the big banks can learn from the private banks? Because this is something about relationships that you've been doing well for a very long time. And I see that here when I'm talking to people in banking, the focus on the customer is shifting. Sometimes the focus, though, isn't always put in the right place. What, what sort of lessons do you think banking more generally can learn about how it is that we treat a customer and why that matters? Well, I have an enormous respect of, of all these very large um, banks, uh, in international banks. They have an intellectual capability of, of developing programs, schemes, services, products, which is, is unrivaled, and, and we can learn from them. Yet client service becomes very difficult for very large organizations with very steep hierarchies and, 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 and many layers. And you're never quite sure what comes out at the end and how the, the great ideas of, of, a, of a central organization is then interpreted. With 200 people, we know each other. We tend to say it's one big family. And, and we see each other uh, on a daily basis. And, and, and we have a lot of confidence within our people to say, I'd like to introduce my client uh, to my boss. And, 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 and all of us are always involved in client meetings. Everybody in general management every day sees clients and therefore understands what the clients want, also understands the difficulties of our own people in progressing and, and in offering services, 
and we can then get together again, think about what went well, what didn't go so well, or what was difficult, and how we could make it better in the future. So boutique banks today have an extraordinary advantage um, in that sense. If everybody is really committed to be close to clients, we can organize ours, uh, ourselves differently. Um, we, we tend to have meetings not during the peak hours of client meetings, because we want to be available um, to clients. We organize our, ourselves differently and we regularly challenge our own processes to say, was this client focus? Does this add value to our clients? In terms of your ongoing values, do you ever find yourselves um, readjusting them, if you like, as you go along and saying, these are our core values, but actually sometimes we may add another one that we think is really, really important, depending on the client base and, of course, its feedback? I'd like to say yes, because it sounds dynamic uh, <laughs> to, 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 to um, be proof of evolution. No, we don't change core values. and. Because we believe that this is long last, this is our DNA. And, and, and this is where we differ. Client focus, commitment to competence and innovation, the respect of diversity, and the respect of rules. Essentially, these are four core values. We could have probably thought of more, but these four are typical for our work. And these core values are lived and they are transmitted. And today, we often have people applying for a job because they say, I share the same values as you do. And, and this is a great feedback from the external market. People recognize what our values are and they say, I can identify and I would like to work for them. So we wouldn't like to confuse them by changing but it means, of course, that within those values, we have to regularly ask ourselves how, is, how are the client needs changing? How are the challenges in, in, in competence evolving? What do we need to add in innovation? FinTech uh, is one of these buzzwords. How can we be seen as an innovative company? What do we need to do? So within these values, there's constant evolution and constant search for the best possible solution. Well, I wish you all the very best for the future. Fascinating to talk to you, Vern. Thank you. Thank you very much, Julie. Thank you.